Good day, hi and welcome. Hey, Gazoo, I'm not making too much noise, am I? Am I keeping you up? Poor guy only got 23 hours of sleep last night. Come on, let's do this. There we go. Okay, so what have I got for you today? Well, I am going to introduce to you my new base. This is the second base I've owned uh, in 50 years. <laughs> uh, the first base I had was some sort of a no-name base I found in the garbage back when I was a teenager. It had a concrete on the headstock. I chipped it off. It worked, but it, it really sucked. So uh, I bought a base, and this is an Ibanez Geo GSR 205 GR or SR uh, five string, and it's uh, the abbreviation, the brown, whatever. Uh, B, it's BW something whatever. Uh, the Ibanez has usually uh, here it is right here. Uh, yeah, Geo SR. So on the site it says GSR and then there's SR. So I guess GOSR, that's, that's what it is. So I paid 391 bucks and 99 cents. And then with the, the shipping and everything, which I think the shipping was free for this, was 450 bucks. Now, here's the deal. I uh, bought this at the art store in uh, Mar uh, New Market, Ontario. And uh, everything I order from them takes about uh, 40. You want back out? I, just, I swear I just let you in. I swear I just did that. Yeah. Got to watch out because there's another big cat out there. You got to protect my other cats. Uh, anyway, so my first bass was a four string. I took bass in high school. Been a guitar player for 45 years. Took bass in high school. Took drums in high school uh, on the music course uh, class. And um, the bass, the bass back then I had was a, it was a, a guild or a washburn. I can't remember, but the thing was like it was the bass of bass. It was uh, it was quite heavy and it was quite uh, awesome sounding. Uh, but my budget was a little bit less for my bass this time. This is not going to be my last bass. I am going to get a very professional bass fairly soon. But I needed something for my recordings. So I get a little closer here so you can see it. Uh, writing's upside down, but anyway, um, so let, let's go through uh, what I got here. We'll go through the specs the best I can remember them. So you got a Okama, Okama, Okama body in a walnut satin finish. So it's, you can feel the wood grains and stuff like that, but it's very smooth. You have your typical Jabota fingerboard, that's kind of like the go-to cheap, uh, cheap cheap wood. Uh, maple neck. Not sure how many piece. Usually Ibanez builds these things up pretty good. Uh, can't remember the name of the Ibanez pickups, but they're the base model pickups. Uh, two volumes, one tone, and a fat, P-H-A-T, two switch, which the switch is active, but the pickups are passive. Um, I know it's a little confusing, but uh, that, that's what it is. And this just kind of thickens out the base. So uh, for recording it, uh, I one thing about Ibanez, I've always got to say, and I've owned a lot of Ibanez instruments over the years, is that they'll build the best stuff out of the cheapest material and they over-engineer. Now look at this, okay, this jack. Look at how this jack is in there. That is like the most, why does other manufacturers need to copy this somehow? You know, like that little wing nut thing there that falls off all the time. Uh, and then there's this, you know, like this is like, you drive a tank over that. Uh, strap locks, not majorly sized. Cheap bridge, but does the job. I left the, the, you can see I've been playing it a bit. Been playing for about a week now. It is, uh, how many frets does this thing? Oh, it's only 22. I thought it was 24. <laughs> That's how much attention I paid to it. Uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, it also has a bolt-on neck, which actually the heel joint is actually quite comfortable. There's your battery socket for your FAT2 switch, cutaway, uh, regular electronics, and uh, no, I guess this is a single piece neck, and you got the, there, it's a, it's a satin, it's a, it's a smooth neck, it's not bad. Um, this isn't going to be the most impressive base in the world. I'm not going to sell you that, oh, it's 
you know, phenomenal bang for the buck. It's not bad. Trust me, I've played better. In the price range, I don't know if I've played a lot better. You come back in again? Oh, she's hiding over there now. Uh, so, four string versus five string. This is probably about the going rate for a five string bass on the cheap. It's gonna be around 400 bucks. Uh, pick a brand, any brand. Uh, the thing about this, oh, um, these are medium frets. They're not bad, not bad. Uh, I usually, like, so medium frets means they're super jumbo uh, in Ibanez terms. Like, um, other manufacturers have small frets, medium frets, and large frets, and jumbo frets. Uh, Ibanez has jumbo and rail ties. Um, th that's why an Ibanez sounds like an Ibanez, is they, they use super, super, super jumbo frets. The fret work is okay. But however, I am kind of impressed that I can do that and I'm not bleeding. Uh, I don't know, give this guitar a few more months, see how it dries out. Maybe the frets will get sharp on the edge, but it's actually not bad for the price. Uh, that's something that drives me nuts is, is uh, sharp frets, just because I hate bleeding all over my instruments. Uh, obviously it has a truss rod. It's not a reinforced neck. It's just your regular whatever. The action is, meh, it's okay. So, why a five string? Well, I am a metal guy, uh, and I am going under a kind of a new, how am I doing for time? Going under like a new kind of, uh, I'm, I'm working out of the pentatonic phase, so to speak, uh, which is your classic rocker stuff. That's a false alarm cat. Okay. I know what she's because he, the big fat cat's in there. He's, yeah, he's a nice looking cat, but he's a little too, uh, he doesn't get along with our cats. So, but anyway, yeah. So, uh, if you're thinking of a gigging bass and you want a lightweight bass, these things are, I mean, I don't know what they weigh, seven or eight pounds. It's like seven and a half, eight pounds, something like that, I think is what I read. Uh, string spacing. Uh, because it is a five string, the strings are a little bit closer and the string spacing at the nut, I believe is 16.4 millimeters or 16.5 millimeters between each string. So for those of you that are slapaholics, uh, you might find it a little bit crammed. Uh, that said, the scale is 34 inch, which is kind of like the going right scale for a normal bass. If you're talking Gibson basses, they're shorter, they're like 30 inch. Uh, which that's why Gibson basses are so awesome because, to play because they're so much easier. I'd uh, give you an idea, and you're going to be probably seeing a lot of videos uh, of me playing bass and stuff. I don't have a bass amp, but it, again, I mainly bought this for recording. But if you're a guitar player and you're having a hard time getting into a band, buy a bass because everybody's always looking for a bass. For every one good, uh, one bass player out there, there's probably about 5,000 guitar players. It's probably a ratio similar to that. I know a lot of really fantastic guitar players go on bassist. Um, and I mean, bass is fun. I've always, I've always had fun with bass. And I've always been an okay bass player. It's just, uh, it's time on the instrument. That, I swear I just let you out. Um, anyway, um, it's time spent on the instrument that makes the difference, right? So my three finger Steve Harris kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of work to do there. I could do it, but I, I, I just, uh, uh, you know, like it takes a while to build up the, you, you know, your finger biceps. I don't know what the, that muscle is called, but um, my slapping technique because the bass, you must slap it. You must slap it all of the time. What do you do? You slap the bass. Maybe 504, I guess I'll be watching a lot of him. Uh, he's a funny guy, actually. <laughs> he's pretty funny. Probably one of the better bass channels out there. But um, yeah, my two finger walks and stuff, like they're not bad. Uh... I never played a lot of five string bass. I've only pay, played them a handful of times. And the first thing I notice is the extra ringing of that B string. And the other thing I notice about this particular bass is if you got the money and you're going to go into five string, buy a multi-scale, or at least try one out. I haven't tried out a multi-scale uh, uh, instrument yet where you're, or fan fret, you'll see like the frets are not straight like this because you don't quite have enough tension on that low B and it's more of just like a, a drone rather than, you know, like um, you, you get definition out of the E, 
like a normal bass. But when you go to the, the, I find this is so sonically low because there's not enough tension on it. And to stay intonated, you might not be able to, you know, I might not be able to pull this back to get more tension on it. Plus, you know, you're putting more tension on the instrument, whatever. Uh, it just, it's kind of a catch 22. So I think what will solve, it's the same problem that the eight string guitars have, uh, is that they don't have enough tension on the lower strings. And then if you get enough tension on the lower strings, you end up with too much tension on the higher strings. Uh, so it's, it's six of one, half a dozen, the other, you know, you're going to limit. So why a five string bass for me? I do plan on, if I buy a professional bass, it's going to be a four string just because... It, four strings just make so much sense, you know, uh, but the five string, it's nice having that low B, especially with my extended range guitars. I can work around that. But that said, uh, it, it's a different playing technique. So would I recommend a beginner, someone who has no pro, like I'm a multi-instrumentalist, but would I recommend somebody who has absolutely no ability to play an instrument to start on a five string? I don't know. Uh, I don't think most people, most bass players that are accomplished do not recommend that. Let's have a look at these tuners. These are just regular Ibanez tuners. Yeah. Oh, they still got the plastic on them too. Uh, bass, bass model tuners. But anyway, yeah. So I gotta have, oh, dad's home. So I'm gonna have to cut this one short. But anyway, there we go. Uh, I'll, I'll do more uh, talking on this in the next video.